Welcome back, everyone. We're diving deep today, really deep, into the mind of James Watt. James uh, Watt. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, I think a lot of us, we kind of have that image of the steam engine in our heads. Yeah, the textbook stuff. But we're going way beyond the textbook today. Oh, really? Straight to the source. His 1769 patent. Wow, going old school. This document, it's not just about the nuts and bolts. It's like a blueprint for a revolution. A blueprint. We're going to decode it together. Sounds good. Uh, so 1769, that's even before the American Revolution. It is. It's wild to think about, right? Yeah, how much the world was about to change and what. He was right there on the leading edge. It's incredible how even back then he was laser focused on efficiency. You know, the world's on the cusp of this industrial revolution. Yeah. But he's already figuring out how to power it in a way that wouldn't, like, drain every coal mine in sight. Right, right. Because the common fire engines, that's what he calls them in the patent, notoriously inefficient. Oh, yeah. Total energy hogs. Yeah. And he knew it. He saw a better way. He really did. And he lays out seven distinct principles in this patent. Seven. Seven. Each one tackling, like, a specific inefficiency head on. Wow. Like a seven-point plan for revolutionizing power. I love that. The seven pillars of innovation. Ah, I like it. Okay, so let's start with principle number one, maintaining heat. Okay. What was Watts thinking here? Well, think about it. If you're constantly heating and cooling a cylinder, you're wasting a tremendous amount of energy. Yeah, that makes sense. So Watt realized keeping the cylinder hot, consistently hot, was crucial. So it's like a, a super-powered thermos. Uh-huh. Yeah, kind of. So how did he propose to do this? He had a few ideas. First, using insulating materials, you know, keep that heat in. Okay. Second, surrounding the cylinder with steam itself. Oh, interesting. And then the third one, and this is pretty clever, actively preventing contact with anything cold. Wow, so he's really controlling the environment around the cylinder. Absolutely. He was obsessed with heat management. And what kind of impact did this have? Oh, it was a game changer. By minimizing heat loss, his engine could operate with significantly less fuel. So we're talking big efficiency gains. Huge. Some estimates say his engine was about three times more efficient than earlier models. Wow. That meant lower operating costs, and that, that made a huge difference during the Industrial Revolution. It's amazing how something that seems so simple, you know, just keeping something hot, can have such a massive impact. It really is, and that was just the first principle. Okay, so principle one lays the groundwork. Then we get to principle number two, the separate condenser. Ah, the separate condenser. This is a big one, right? But can you help me understand why it was so revolutionary? Sure. So think about how earlier engines worked. They cooled the steam right inside the cylinder. Okay. So the cylinder itself, constantly being heated and cooled, so inefficient. Right, yeah. Watt's breakthrough was realizing he could condense the steam separately in a different vessel. So two zones, hot and cold. Exactly. Okay. The condenser kept much colder than the cylinder. And this made a big difference. A massive difference. By keeping the cylinder hot consistently, Watt dramatically reduced the energy wasted in all those heating and cooling cycles. It's like he streamlined the whole process. Less wasted energy, more power output. Precisely. This innovation alone is credited with significantly increasing the efficiency of steam engines. Wow. Okay, so he's basically... He's letting the engine work smarter, not harder. Exactly. I'm starting to see why Watt is considered a genius. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's next on the list? Principle number three, air removal. Air removal? Sounds kind of basic. Yeah, it does. But think of it like this. Imagine trying to run, but through water. Okay. You need more energy to push through the water compared to running through air, right? Right. Same principle here. So air in the system, it creates resistance. Yeah, makes the engine work less efficiently. Okay. Watt understood this. Even small amounts of air could impede the engine's operation. So what did he do? He incorporated pumps to remove air and any uncondensed vapor. So he's really thinking about every factor that could affect performance. Oh, absolutely. Okay, now I'm curious about principle number four. Harnessing the expansive force of steam. <sighs> I'm picturing a, like a, a powerful engine pushing beyond its limits. You're getting it. See, previous engines, they mainly relied on atmospheric pressure. Okay. But Watt saw an opportunity 
to harness the inherent power of steam as it expands. So he's tapping into a whole new level of power. Exactly. He wanted to use that expansion to drive the engine, not just rely on the vacuum created by condensation. That's brilliant. And did he did he succeed? He did. He even designed the engine so it could discharge steam into the open air if water was scarce. Oh, clever. A practical solution, you know, for certain situations. He wasn't just theorizing. He was thinking about how this engine would work in the real world. So practical and innovative. It's like he anticipated challenges before they even arose. Who's a visionary. All right, on to principle number five. This one sounds complex, rotary motion. This is where things get really interesting. See, earlier engines mostly used that back and forth piston motion. Okay, yeah. But Watt envisioned using steam to generate continuous rotary motion. That's, that's a big shift. It is. The kind of power that could drive mills, factories, eventually even locomotives. So he's setting the stage for, like, the mechanization of entire industries. Exactly. But how did he actually achieve this rotary motion using steam? It was ingenious. Imagine a, a hollow ring, kind of like a donut shape. Okay, I'm picturing it. Now, picture valves and weights inside this ring. Inside the donut. Yes. Strategically placed, steam is admitted, pushing these weights around the channel. Oh, I see. And that motion, that's what generates the continuous rotation. Wow, that's... That's hard to picture, but it sounds like a masterpiece of engineering. It really is. Okay, so on to principle number six, steam contraction. Now this one, this one I'm a bit lost on. Was he trying to like make the steam smaller? It's not about making it smaller, but about using controlled cooling to contract the steam. He saw this as another potential way to generate power. Right. Using cycles of expansion and contraction. Interesting. It's a lesser known aspect of his work, but it shows he was constantly exploring, always looking for new possibilities. So even the cooling part of the process, he's finding ways to harness energy. Pretty remarkable. It is. Okay. And finally, principle number seven. What's that all about? This one gets into the materials. So earlier engines used water to create airtight seals. Okay. But water... Well, it, it can contribute to heat loss. Ah, uh, right. Back to that. So Watt experimented with oils, wax, rosin, even quicksilver. Quicksilver. Wow. All to create more effective seals. He was really leaving no stone unturned when it came to optimizing this engine. Not a single one. It's amazing how much thought went into every single aspect of the design. Watt's genius wasn't just in his individual innovations. It was in his holistic approach. He was reinventing the steam engine from the ground up. And this leads us to a fascinating section of the patent where he goes beyond just the technical stuff. Oh. It gets almost strategic. Strategic. Yeah. Yeah, you see patents, they're not just about protecting an invention. Right. They also define its scope, you know, drawing lines around what makes it unique. Okay, so like a legal strategy almost. Exactly. And that's what Watt does in this next section. <laughs> You're talking about the Be It Remembered section. That's the one. It sounded pretty technical. What's he getting at there? He's clarifying that his principle of using the expansive force of steam, that's principle number four. Right. It doesn't apply to engines where water is injected directly into the steam vessel. Why would he need to specify that? It seems very specific. It is specific, and that's exactly why he highlights it. See, some earlier engines, they did use water injection to create a vacuum, power the piston. Oh, okay. Watt's drawing a distinction. My invention is different, he's saying. I'm harnessing the power of steam in a new way. So it's not just about being thorough. It's about staking his claim as an innovator. Exactly. Like, this is my territory. Here's how it differs. Yeah, it's like he's preemptively addressing any potential challenges, you know, confusion. He's laying the groundwork for the future development of his engine. So smart on Watt's part, not just a brilliant engineer. No. A savvy businessman. Too. Yeah, absolutely. It's fascinating to see how those technical details mm -hmm. and then the legal considerations, they're all kind of intertwined. Yeah. But, you know, stepping back from a, we're talking about a document from 1769. Mm. The world was a very different place. It was. It was. And I think that's what makes this so compelling. We're not just exploring an invention. We're getting a glimpse into a pivotal moment in history. It's easy to forget that Watt's steam engine wasn't just a cool gadget. It was a catalyst. Oh, yeah. For profound societal change. It powered the Industrial Revolution, transformed manufacturing, transportation, even the yeah. way we live our lives. Absolutely. It's no exaggeration to say Watt's innovation set in motion a chain of events that shaped the modern world. And it all started with this patent, his vision for a more efficient, powerful way to harness steam. 
It's kind of mind-boggling when you think about it. These seemingly small details, these technical nuances, they represent the building blocks of a technological revolution. Mm. It's like the seeds of an idea mm. that changed the course of history. It's true. And what's truly remarkable is that Watt achieved all this through a deep understanding of fundamental principles. He wasn't relying on magic or alchemy. This was scientific rigor, engineering ingenuity, solving real world problems. He had incredible precision. Every sentence, every clause in this patent, it serves a purpose. Mm -hmm. It speaks to his methodical approach, his unwavering commitment to pushing the boundaries of what was possible. And if you connect that back to the bigger picture, Watt's work really embodied the spirit of the Enlightenment. Reason, experimentation, a belief in human ingenuity, solving challenges, improving the world. And it's a spirit that continues to inspire today. We're still grappling with these challenges, energy efficiency, sustainability, technological advancement. That raises a really important question. How can we channel that same spirit to tackle the challenges of our time? How can we apply Watt's meticulous approach, that relentless pursuit of improvement, to the problems we face today? That's a great question. And I think one that we'll be exploring further as we continue our deep dive into James Watt's groundbreaking work. Mm -hmm. So let's move on to the final part of our deep dive where we'll try to answer that very question. All right, <laughs> so we've, we've covered a lot of ground here. Yeah. Seven principles, the legal stuff, historical context. But for you, what's the, like, the big takeaway? What makes this patent so fascinating even now, centuries later? I think what really stands out is Watt's approach. It wasn't just about these sparks of genius. Mm -hmm. It was methodical, systematic, mm -hmm. driven by this deep understanding of engineering and the practical side of industry. He was a problem solver. Exactly. Yeah. He didn't just come up with ideas. He tinkered, he experimented, he pushed the boundaries. That's what I find so inspiring, that perseverance. He had a vision and he just didn't let go. And that vision, it had this impact that went way beyond his workshop. The steam engine, it wasn't just a cool invention. It was a driving force right. behind the Industrial Revolution. It shaped economies, societies, the world as we know it. It's a powerful reminder that innovation, it doesn't happen in a vacuum. Right. It has these ripple effects that can change the course of history. So what lessons can we learn from James Watt? from this revolutionary steam engine. What can we apply to our own lives, our work, our own pursuit of innovation? I think there are a few key takeaways. First, never be afraid to question the status quo. Just because something's always been done this way doesn't mean there isn't a better way. Watt looked at the steam engine with fresh eyes. He saw the potential for something truly groundbreaking. And second, the details matter. It's often the small things, the tweaks, the improvements that make the biggest difference. Watt's obsession with heat management, those seals, crucial to his success. Absolutely. And finally, embrace perseverance. Innovation, it's rarely a straight line. There will be setbacks, challenges, doubts. But Watt, he never gave up on his vision. He kept iterating, experimenting, pushing forward till he achieved his goal. And because of that, the world was forever changed. So the next time you face a challenge, remember the lessons of James Watt. Question the assumptions, focus on the details, and never give up on your pursuit of a better solution. You know, who knows? Maybe you'll be the next James Watt. Poised to revolutionize an industry, leave your mark on the world. It's a thought-provoking idea and leaves us with one final question, something to ponder. How might the world have unfolded differently if Watt hadn't focused on those seemingly small yet crucial improvements? What if he hadn't been so meticulous, so determined to squeeze every ounce of efficiency out of his invention? Would the Industrial Revolution have happened at all? Or would it have taken a different course? It's a fascinating question. But one thing is certain. James Watt's legacy is one of profound impact, enduring inspiration. His work reminds us that innovation is a journey of exploration and discovery, and that even the smallest details can have the power to change the world. That wraps up our deep dive into James Watt's remarkable patent. We encourage you to keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep pushing the boundaries. Until next time, keep diving deep.